Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All with Artie and Marty. So, Hi. we're on Farewell My Turnabout Part 3 2 <coughs> Investigation. Because That's why not keep investigating? Well, yeah, it's the longest investigation period in the game. It's so much so that we needed a to be continued to separate the two parts. Yeah. And this is where we're going to get into the real meat of the case, I think. March 22nd, 9.14 cool. p.m., Gatewater Hotel, Corridus Hotel Room. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder... I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. Y you're right. She doesn't seem too convinced. Oh, I just realized- <laughs> These are great her... topics to talk about with an eight-year-old. Okay, you know what <laughs> I just realized? Every time she's sad, her little, like, hair loopies, like, yeah. little <laughs> Guitar is not guitar without her hair loopies. <laughs> I never made that connection. They both totally have hair loopies. Yeah. Katars are in front of her face, though. So the real person who killed Mr. Corita was... That assassin, Mr. Shelley, to kill her, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. Well, someone could have just gotten their hands on one, or he could have even just been... <laughs> done it and not done it. Right. But, he, yeah. I will say, he is a classy assassin. So maybe he's like, I wouldn't do that. But, yeah, he, he's very much... He, it's already been established he's like, I'm not going to hurt this person, I'm not going to do anything like this, I'm going to make... He's like, of course that means I'm not going to feed her, but, like, I will uphold my end of the deal, which normally most assassins are just yeah. like, let me kill. So, <laughs> at least he's a little classy. Yeah, but, so maybe that's where they're going. Right, right. I think that may be it. It's like but, leaving a business card. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one who that hired the killer to begin with? Who was his client? Well, maybe it was her. You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Yeah. Who, who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I think it could be. I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go for the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? Well, maybe she was too afraid to. She needs someone to follow. She's not going to take the initiative. I think that's exactly what happened. You know what? But here's the thing. Why doing that only implicated herself and made herself look extremely suspicious? If she had I hired... don't think it worked out the way she wanted it to, but as every crime I think happens. But I think what she needed, she's like, I need someone to follow. I need someone to do this for me because she knew she was going to like chicken out and have all these feelings okay and i don't know maybe she didn't think she was strong enough to strangle the guy or okay so are you thinking like she hired to kill her he killed the guy and then she went in to get the suicide note later and then is like oh i'm gonna frame matt for this and make him look like the guilty party yeah and the assassin's like be. how dare you i did this and i was proud of it <laughs> and that's why he's like get on guard off the hook <laughs> i don't know maybe they both have a previous history with on guard who knows mm. I mean, obviously, he, the Mr. De Killer, knows her original mentor, so it could be, I mean, maybe they were married or something, it could be that they've met previously, and then she was oh. like, this is one of the, this is the only other person I can turn to, even though he's Interesting. crazy. Interesting. It could be like that. I don't know. But if Miss Andrews... Theories! <laughs> but if Miss Andrews wasn't the client... Then, no, it can't be! Matt Ongard himself? I mean... But Matt seems so dumb. I mean, maybe he's really smart, but he seems so dumb. Yeah. Mr. Unger really did hire the assassin. That he is not innocent at all. Far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. But, but it can't be Mr. Unger, right? I mean, when we first talked with him. Mr. Unger, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Corita? I mean, no, he didn't. Alright, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corita, okay? But that could very well be that it's the wrong question. 
Hmm, that's part of it. That's what yeah. I think it is. I didn't see any We also haven't Cyclops seen him the since time. then, because he was like, you feed my cat, dude? <laughs> he was in questioning, and visiting hours were over, that's why. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, what was this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had his, in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Destroyed his acting career. Again, all I can think of is a big <laughs> scandal. It's either that or it's like, or never mind. I was going to say, like, someone else is doing the acting for him. He's just, like, looking the part. He could there. Well. That actually could be, though. That's the thing. Or it could be, like, he secretly does stuff. Like He does drugs. He, yeah, he secretly does. No, but, like, he does, like, a se separate side job thing that, like, no one would recognize him as. Oh, interesting. I don't know. But that seems too far-fetched. Like, you wouldn't have mm -hmm. anything to lead on to that. Mr. Ungard's secret! Well, what is the secret?! I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corito was going to reveal this secret. That means... Mr. Ongard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corita silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Ongard. There's no way around it now. Well, they have to let us! They'll let him. It's not a let him. Oh, maybe we're running into Lada again. <laughs> March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel Hallway. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of this secret Mr. Corita held about Mr. Ongard. And Miss Andrews' real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm, I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Make Pearls be his sister. Little Who? sister, have, oh, have it, no, have it, have Pearl claim to be Mr. Ongard's little sister, and then he, he, they'd let him visit. Maybe. Oh, that's far fetched. Yeah, uh, probably. March twenty second, Viola Hall. Oh boy. Huh? Hey, wait. What is it, you whipper snapper? All I know, nothing is that has. All I know is nothing that has ever to do with you is ever any good. Just like now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. What? And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel! Oh. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm gonna feel free to direct all my anger towards you! <laughs> oh, gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are! <laughs> Edgeworth's definitely a great pal. This is absolutely top secret, so we better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, that gossip that's been going down around my, about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? But I'm sure she must have had of some reason for getting close to Mr. Corita. I'll let you in on another secret, Yunnan. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puppy haired photographer girl! The nerve of some people! I mean, I could see her <laughs> doing that to me. Spying on people by herself, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too! Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. Well, Juan and Adrian. So you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. Well, he doesn't have one, so that makes sense. A manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts, Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Well, 
Yes, yes, that's the one. That says everything right there. <laughs> Manager's dead. Needs a new one. He's like, He's like hey, hey, you want to come over here? You, you, she mentored you, so you're probably good enough. And she's like, what? <laughs> that also explains why he doesn't have a, manager. a mentor. Yeah. That Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. To him? M married? You mean to Mr. Corita? Huh? Really? You young kids totally don't know. Oh, today don't know anything. Or do totally. You? <laughs> totally don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What the? Well, so she was gonna get married to Corita. Yes. Three days and... later, she killed herself. I think we might. Nah, we and might be well about Jekyla to figure out. Why. Has a picture of her in his house. Maybe. It's not his house. It's Ongard's house. Oh, that's even worse. Maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe that's. Oh my gosh, is this like the messiest situation ever? <laughs> is that his mom? What are you talking no, about? No, not not um to kill her. Ongard's. I. Uh, that's what I thought. That's. St okay. Celeste was in her twenties. Okay. Matt is twenty-one. Siblings. But with a different name? I don't know! This doesn't make any sense! Well, we might be figuring some of this out. Why would Miss Zip have to wait to kill herself? She was going to get married! Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. Wait, three days- What?! So, three days after ma marriage engagement. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think like... that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> Just like- <laughs> Nah. <laughs> this is the weirdest how sound I, how... I've seen come from my mouth. <laughs> how, how am I going to title the episode that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to it a bunch, and then it won't sound like a word, and then you'll figure it out. <laughs> but but they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Uh, is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. Oh, thankfully. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. Maybe he was blackmailed by the killer and was like, hey, uh, I need you to do this thing. <laughs> and he was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. I wonder what happened to make him suddenly well, I don't, say nah. I I don't know why they picked the clowns music to play here. Da, 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 da. I don't have anything to say to delinquents like you. They need to like me. Uh, she's clamming up like the old clam she is. Please, anything would be helpful. Well then, how about I tell you my measurements? Still no. <laughs> she really doesn't like you, does she, Mr. Nick? We already established this in an earlier one. Bye. Oh, there's someone out here. March 22nd, what? Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. She was arrested. Oh, yeah, that's right. On uh, that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm, I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Yeah, I will say it is easier to hide a, cr uh, hide a crime with that many people around. Mm -hmm. That is one thing I will it say. It looks like things in here in the lobby have finally calmed down. There's no one there. So, yeah. Uh, criminal affairs? That'd be cool. March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs department. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. Ongard's lawyer, right? Ah, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. Great. A decisive Wait, witness? Wait, a new person? You mean, for Mr. Ongard's case? Is this gonna be the killer? We're taking the witness's statement right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. Either that or it's gonna be Lotta. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who, who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M mr Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are all over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. Perfect! Huh? I've already called them, so they know. 
Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Come on, thank you very much. gonna be like, oh, dude, I need my beauty sleep. Beauty sleep. With an emphasis on beauty. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content? It sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Maybe we should drop off Pearls at home. I don't think she wants to spend the entire night in yeah. jail. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What?! The real killer in the Corridor murder is an assassin?! This must be someone's idea of a joke! I can't believe this garbage! <laughs> Have a little more faith in your own subordinates! <laughs> that must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. It seems as though my true face has been revealed. I was an elite businessman who made deals with the entire world! I was the young successor and CEO of a colossal corporate conglomeration. But my real self is that of a regular everyday policeman! Stop doing image training and get yourself out there in the field! That's awesome. I thought for a second that was gonna just be like the plot. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I'm psyched you out. March 22nd, the detention poor center, dude has to work visitor's overtime. room. <laughs> I'm sure it's a different guard, they just use the same sprite. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Well, On Guard or it Andrews first? We're gonna hear both, right? Yes. Let's... Who do you want to Is there a first? better order to do? That makes Not more necessarily, sense? Not necessarily. Really? I really want to hear from Matt. Okay. That's who I want to hear from, because... There's a yeah. lot. Dude, it's Mr. Wright! I hope you can get me out of the off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I, I hope so too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me and said that Juan Corrida was killed by an assassin, and that assassin's client is this man, Matt Ongard. What's wrong? Mr. Ongard, there's something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm, you seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual warrior dude self. Yeah, not my totally usual normal right. warrior dude Matt's self. Matt's secret. Um, about the press conference? You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as the Nickel Samurai? How'd you know that? Yeah, he was in court oh, the yeah, entire true, time. <laughs> yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked as that somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful. That it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is? Please? Just please have a psych lock. Yes! Thank you! Well, fine. You, you had to have seen this coming. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, d d don't tell me. A psych lock. We should have gotten this sooner. To be fair, we should have asked him about more. The press we should have asked him more specific questions, but we couldn't. Right. Because I remember we left, and I was like, "He's not the killer," but we asked him that. We didn't ask him if he had anything to do with the murder. Right. You said a secret, right? But you don't have any idea what it is, do you, dude? Yeah, we don't. Did you know about Mr. Corrida and Miss Andrews' relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Ah, but I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corrida. Her mentor was Mr. Corrida's manager, and Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impex's suicide note from him. Celeste. Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for pizza? My treat! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Is it a kind of pea? Like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Pizza ah, amazing. got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Ongard, are you connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way? I wonder if it's if it's the most awkward love square of the <laughs> Square? Life. Not triangle, square. Where it's like, you got Juan, you got Matt, you've got Celeste, and you've got Adrian Andrews all to the home. Oh boy. I wonder if it is where it's like, he had a little something something with Celeste, and then Juan was not having any of that. And then to make and then to like get back 
it's over there. Then to get back, like, Wong was like, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna have your manager in my room or whatever. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah, you figured do that to my manager? I'm gonna do that to your manager! No, but it could be something stupid like that. It could be, that's or true. Or could, I don't know. Could you please take a look at this? I know it may not seem important to you. Your smile seems so fake. Well, if it's not important, then I'd rather be in bed. Me too. <laughs> that's my, that's my core. If I don't get my 12 hours of beauty sleep, my skin's gonna wrinkle up like a prune, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you I... totally call it. <laughs> you know, he's right, Mr. Nick. Your skin's kind of drying up here and there. I swear, after this case is over, I'm going to get lots and lots of sleep. Yeah, because Maya will be safe. Well? I'm kind of scared to show him this card. What's wrong, dude? Oh, um, so about this picture card. Have you ever seen this before? Nope, never saw it before in my life, dude. I don't think he's lying, or is he? There should have then been again, something. he looked like he gasped just now. Maybe I'm seeing things? Oh, 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 I know. Do you have a butler? <laughs> About this person, he's... He's your butler, Mr. Doe, right? You met him at your mansion. What? Someone broke my mansion? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He's a pretty cool dude who could do lots of things. He takes real good care of me. Then why didn't you make us go feed your cat? <laughs> Just let the butler feed your cat! He's like, no man, he always feeds him the worst <laughs> kind of food. We need to feed him the wet food. <laughs> 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 I can totally see that. Dude, nothing but the best for Shu, you know? I yeah. wish we had Shu as evidence. I wish That'd we be great. Too. Yo, Adrian, or, or Celeste. Mr. On Guard? Dude, I know I asked you to be my lawyer and all, but I don't think I have to tell you anything and everything. Oh? Are you being sassy um, with me? What do you mean by that? It just means I don't have to tell you anything and everything, dude. Well, you're not telling me enough. I don't get it. Why would she want to frame me? I mean, I've never done anything to her, dude. What if you... Mr. Ongard sounds pretty sincere, and he seems trustworthy. That's the problem with... So I have to find out what Miss Andrew's real intentions are. She doesn't want to get blamed for murder? <laughs> Um, dude, this person looks like a member of my fan club. <laughs> oh, wait, we did this before, didn't we? <laughs> Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask the fan club president, okay? Um, dude, you know what? Forget I asked. <laughs> Yo, is Von Karma in there? She's like, uh, yes. <laughs> what? Why are we... That's all we can do. Oh. March 22nd, Wright and Company Law Offices. It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective's here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronic stores. Then, I'll make some salad for him for dinner! It looks like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us. Yeah, and he could use a salad. Um, Mr. Nick? Hmm? Yes? Where is the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. You are so <laughs> unhealthy, Phoenix! <laughs> Aw, I guess I'll have to give up on making a salad, then. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. You can make a spinach salad. Yeah, you don't need lettuce for a salad. Oh, that's all the same yeah. stuff. Okay, I that cannot... was worth seeing. <laughs> that was worth seeing. What the heck? Phoenix is just okay. To be fair, he does have his own house, so maybe he's like, yeah. I don't need lettuce here. <laughs> but there are some in Japan, California. Um, there are some people who like live at their office practically. Mm -hmm. Um, so be... they would have fridges with stuff. In with it. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know if they'd have lettuce necessarily. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Well, the other Adrian Andrews. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour, but there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. It's okay, I'm reading a book. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corita had on Mr. Ongard. <laughs> I love how for Matt we get like the upbeat, like groovy tune in for this, we get the really sad tune. She's, yeah. I'd like to ask you about Matt Ongard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ongard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. I mean, to be fair... Like, wow! No, to be fair, it could be she didn't know what the heck he was like until she became manager, and then she's like, this dude is a pill. 
<laughs> like you know, he, he relies on me for everything. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of a manager's job, but she could just be like, he's so annoying to me, but like not to other people. He's got like he could be like that two faced person that's like, I'm happy with my people, and then like I'm really grumpy around my manager, or like I make her do all these things. I don't know. Dude, I need twelve hours of beauty sleep. Yeah, <laughs> just stop interrupting me. I'm sleeping in my costume. She's like, whatever. You're gonna wrinkle it. Just take it to the dry cleaners later, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. Don't call yeah. me dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About Miss Celeste Impacts. I have finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent toward Juan. I would never do something so stupid. The suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Also, here's my thing. I understand her motivations, but I would feel like if you burned it and it was never found, it would be way more likely to be gossip and be like, What did it say? Does it exist? Rather than if it was announced to the public, everyone would know, and then it would be It could under be something the really big, though. I think her suicide note may have, like, a bunch of de-killer things on it, and she's like, I need to protect the world. Mm. I need to, I don't know, maybe she still knows to kill her, and she's like, I need to protect oh, okay. him. I don't know, maybe there's some sort of connection there. Okay. I need to protect Matt, because he might go after Matt. Why, kind of why did you try to frame Mr. Ongard? That's simple, because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But, but, there has to be another way! The police are excellent at doing their job, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason, so please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? Yeah. Oh, just one? But it could be really hard to take That's out. That's the last psych lock you have to unlock. A psych lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say, revenge. It makes sense. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a love pentagon at this point. Yeah. Actually, hang on. I need to check some. Oh, sweet. This is going to work out perfectly for video length. Miss Andrews, you just need some tomato juice, man. <laughs> just, just, just have some tomato juice. Have some tomato juice. When I was pouring that glass of juice, I honestly had no idea that Juan was dead. Oh, yeah, well, I think we saw this, but I see. I really am a terrible woman, aren't I? One moment I'm thinking of looking after him, and the next I'm stabbing him in the chest with a knife. No, we haven't seen that one before. You know, there was only one thought running through my head at that time. With this, I can finally expose Matt's true nature to the world. His true nature? I wonder why she's saying that, but not telling me what his true nature is. If it were me, I'd think I'd be happy to finally get that kind of thing off my chest. Could be! That Matt and Dick Killer are collaborating together. And she can't say anything? And she can't, and like, they're holding her to it. And they, I don't know, maybe it's like, she's the manager, she has to be her professional self, do that. They killed Celeste. She's furious. You think they killed Celeste? I think they threatened Celeste with something, and then instead of that something happening, she killed herself. Oh. Uh. Like, maybe they were like, we're gonna kill Juan, or we're gonna take your family, uh, take your family, maybe? Uh, get, take your money. Like, all, all of these things that, like, could be really important to her. Yeah. Take okay. take her? Could be that they were gonna try and kill Adrian, and they, she was like, oh my gosh, she's so young. No. Okay. Could be all kinds of things. It was near Juan's dead body. I, I noticed it when I went to fill the glass. And then when I realized that Juan was dead, I completely panicked. That's when I must have unconsciously picked up this card and put it in my pocket. 
As for why, I simply don't know. You know, there was one thought never, running through my we head. We already did this. One thought running through my head. Oh, we oh. So there was a nickel samurai costume inside of this case, correct? Yes, there was. I even personally carried it here from the studio. I always thought it was such a childish thing to dress up and wear a costume like that. But I never thought that I would wind up using it myself that night. I was the one who organized the whole press conference. Juan wanted to deal the most damage possible to Matt's career. And that's why he was killed. It's quite simply a story of cause and effect, yes? Hmm. Um, I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate trifling matters. It's a waste of time to show me things that are of no relevance to me. Wow, this is the first time I've been shut down this badly. It appears to me that rumor was started by Juan himself. <laughs> I believe that. He's like, hey, guys, guess what? I'm totally dating this hot girl here. Yeah, could be. <laughs> Mr. He's Corita, like but... I'm Matt's manager, remember? I think he wanted to embarrass Matt through his relationship with me. But, but didn't Mr. Corita like you? There weren't any feelings of love between us. For me, it was about getting Celeste's suicide note. What about him? For him, it was about wounding Matt's pride. So literally, they're just like, let's hang out together. We don't like each other. I need this thing. You need this let's thing. Let's purposefully deal. get caught to create this scandal. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? I don't know. I this just... is why. This is one of the many reasons why I'm just like, Hollywood things are so stupid. Well, but my thing is, I'm like, I would never think in a million years to act that way. True. For a variety of reasons. But I feel like that's not a normal thing to do. Like, hey, business. I need this thing. You need this thing. Let's pretend to Let's be in a relationship. Let's pretend to be in a relationship or, I don't know, end up being in a relationship, whatever. And then have this huge scandal. And then that'll be publicity. Like, that's... That yeah, I agree. It's stupid. not logical thinking. It's not logical thinking at all. That's all there was. That's... That's... Poor Pearls is in shock. She sees just how cruel the world can really be. Because Pearls is big on the fairy tale, and no, I didn't want to present that! <laughs> yeah. I am too, I feel like, so... Um, I'd like to ask you about this. Nope. <laughs> Trifling. How dare you! Right in front of Pearls' face! How rude! Wow. He's a very prideful man. Or rather, was. He absolutely had to compete with Matt in everything, no matter what it was. He really was such an idiot. It sounds like half the people I know in high school where they're like, Oh yeah, I can eat this hot dog faster than you! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's high school! <laughs> where I'll, I'll go to school and I'll see these two dudes, like, arm wrestling to try and be better. I'm like, alright, I'm gonna go to class now. Yep. Miss Andrews? Well, I guess maybe all stars are like that. Never giving any thought to other people's feelings. That's not true, but sort of. Um, oh, she doesn't know John Doe. Well, he is a butler, so... <laughs> Miss Andrews? That th that things have come to this. I have nothing left to say about that man. Not one word. Security lady! You know, old bag. No. Nope. Trifling. You! I hate talking about myself. It's a trifling matter, that's why. <laughs> Celeste! Celeste was my mentor. She was a strong woman. She wouldn't kill herself over any old trifling matter. So, you have some ideas of why she killed herself? Yes, I suppose. Also, I don't know a lot about the anime. One thing I do know, in the anime they made Adrian and Celeste sisters, which explains a lot of Adrian's like motivations. That would make a lot of sense. But I haven't seen it. I, ha I haven't either. I've just heard that. You just heard that. That yeah. would make a lot more sense. But also, why would they have separate names? I don't know. Maybe they changed one of their names. Maybe they lives. changed one know. of their names, or maybe. Oh they hey, <laughs> what do you have to say about him? Oh, I thought she was gonna be. I can't believe he said that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Carl Vardy. Tune in next time. Yes. Next episode. 
is the episode I've been waiting for for the entire IP. I have no idea what to expect. I'm just excited. We're finishing up the investigation, and we're, we're basically going to learn everything. Everything. Okay. So, absolutely, 100% look forward to that. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.